Very good. Well, praise God. It's hard to believe we're doing something different tonight than Revelation, isn't it? <laughs> nine, nine episodes of Revelation, man. That's the longest series I've ever done by a long shot. <laughs> praise But You know, there was one theme that um, kept coming through to me, and that was about the overcomer. The overcomer. So I want to bring some of that into tonight. But the other word I got from the Lord was children of the light, walking in the light. Okay, so I've got those two words, the overcoming ones and walking in the light. We're going to see how they'll connect tonight. And uh, God was just giving me some great thoughts as I was kind of getting into this. And welcome watching us on YouTube. We haven't had our face out there for a while. We've been PowerPoint, but we're here tonight. So welcome. Glad you joined us. And uh, come over to Genesis uh, chapter 1, actually, the beginning of the Bible. Genesis 1. I want to talk about the light. Does anybody remember the very first recorded words that God spoke? Our, our English Bible says, let there be light. Um, the Hebrew actually renders it, light be. God doesn't waste words, does he? He just said two words. He said, light be. And light was. And, uh, and there was a whole account of creation over six days. But it's interesting that the first thing that God spoke was light. He spoke light because everything that God does has to be done in the light. Everything that happens in our lives must be done in the light. Light comes first. God doesn't do things in the darkness. That's why he created light first. And it's interesting that you know we're familiar with the fact that God created the sun and the moon to give light by day and the moon by night, but they weren't actually created until the fourth day. And yet God said on the first day, light be. So something other than the sun and moon giving light was released on the first day. And I believe myself that it was actually a manifestation of Jesus that was released. When God said, light be, I believe he released the sun. S-O-N, not the S-U-N. He released Jesus. He released the glory of God into the earth, the righteousness of God into the earth. He released the truth into the earth because all things were made through him. And so his first words were, light be. Hallelujah. And... Um, like I said, whenever we do something, it, it has to be done from the light, in the light, and for the light. So let's come over to John uh, chapter 1. John chapter 1 is uh, like a parallel chapter to Genesis chapter 1 in some ways. So John chapter 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. So that tells us that the light was with God right there in the beginning. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Another translation says the darkness did not overcome it. Okay, So we have this thought about the light and overcomers starting to merge right here. You see that? The light shines in the darkness and the darkness does not overcome it. So that tells us if we're going to be overcomers, we're going to walk in the light. Yes. <laughs> All right. If, as long as we walk in the light, we'll overcome every time. Okay. Because the darkness cannot overcome the light because light overcomes darkness. In fact, God spoke into darkness and he said, light be. And the light came out of the darkness. You know, God can look at any dark situation. You and I can look at any dark situation and say, light be, and we can turn that darkness into light. Hallelujah. We can be in a situation that seems hopeless, that seems dark, and God can cause light to shine out of that dark situation. Think about Lazarus in the tomb, <laughs> wrapped up, bound hand and foot, and the cloth wrapped around his head. People have given up all hope for Lazarus, but Jesus said, roll the stone away. And Jesus called him forth, and here comes this man, this mummified man, wrapped in grave clothes, bound hand and foot. He can't see, and the light shines in the darkness, and he comes out of the cave by himself. Yeah. You ever thought about that? The fact he couldn't actually see his way out? But the light came. <laughs> see, there's a greater light than the physical light. See, God said, light be, and four days later, he created the sun and the moon. See, there's a greater light. There's a light of revelation that's available for mankind to walk in, saved or unsaved. Jesus is that light. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overpower it or overcome it. And there was a man sent from God, reading on in verse 6, 
whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. Why did the light shine? So that we might believe in God, that we might believe in Jesus. Hallelujah. He is the true light. And talking about John in verse 8, he was not that light, speaking of John, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. Okay? Saved or unsaved, Jesus is the light. That light is available to every person on the face of the earth to walk in. He was in the world and the world was made through him and the world did not know him. See, everything came out of light and Jesus is the light. He came to his own and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. We'll read on a little more. The word became flesh in verse 14 and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Okay? So we know in that light there is glory, there's grace, there's goodness, and there's righteousness. And that's what God set up on this planet until Satan came along and deceived the man and woman that God had created. They walked in a glory and a goodness and a, and a righteousness, which is just mind-blowing. Okay? And so that was that light that God released. But when Satan came, darkness came back upon the earth, didn't it? As far as glory and revelation and presence of God, access to God's presence, that all disappeared until Jesus then came, born of a woman, born of the virgin, came. And what happened? He said, I'm the light of the world. The light came on again. Hallelujah. Yes. Now let's go to John uh, chapter 8. This is the story of the, um, the woman caught in adultery, okay? Now, so we've got Jesus here in um, the early verses of this chapter, and Jesus is teaching in the temple. He's sharing the word. He's sharing the truth. He's sharing the light. He is the light, and the lights are on. But there's a situation comes up where darkness tries to come and overpower the light. And I want us to look at it in, in that light. Verse 3, it says, the, the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman caught in adultery, and when they set her in the midst, they said, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what did you say? Okay, so here come these guys. They're walking in darkness and they're going to try and overpower the light. And it's interesting and they're going to use the law to do it, to try and do it. And it's interesting when we think about you know, creation and God saying, let there be light. When God actually brought the law... There was actually great darkness. It says there was thick darkness surrounding that mountain, Mount Sinai, when the law was given. God didn't want to give the law. But the children of Israel said, hey, we'll do anything you want us to do. And they brought it upon themselves. They forced the hand of God. And God said, well, I'll have to prove to you that you can't do what you think you can. And so he brought the law. But that law came with darkness. It said thick darkness surrounded him. And here comes this darkness again with these Pharisees, these teachers of the law, the blind guides of the blind, trying to overpower the light. And they talked about Moses and, and they said, testing him that they might have something of which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. And so when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, he who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. And when Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? Okay. Condemnation, accusation does not come out of the light. It's from the pit. It's darkness. And they came, they used the law to do it, to condemn and accuse both the woman and Jesus. Okay? But what happened? The light shone. Jesus spoke words of light and life, and the darkness left one by one. You see that? Yeah. And she said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Light will never condemn you. God will never condemn you. Jesus will never, ever condemn you. 
And notice what Jesus said next in verse 12. Jesus spoke to them again saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. You see that? These guys full of the law, full of darkness, blind guides of the blind. But Jesus, the true light, darkness could not overpower the light. Condemnation and accusation cannot overpower the light. The law cannot overpower grace. Darkness cannot overpower the light. Amen. Jesus is our light. You know, I always warm when anybody starts talking about Jesus, I instantly warm to it. When I hear a message talking about the nature of God and how wonderful Jesus is, it's just something inside of me that just warms to it straight away because here we're talking about the light. We're talking about the life of man. We're talking about where it's at. You know, when darkness is trying to hang around your life, you know, you just look to Jesus and you're back in the light. You know, some people say, you ever heard people say, it just seems like there's a dark cloud following me around? (laughs) Ever heard that before? It seems wherever I go, the cloud goes with me. (laughs) I mean, that'd be all right if it was a glory cloud, but for some people it's a dark cloud and they, they can't work it out. Wherever I go, this black cloud follows me around. Well, that black cloud that hangs around must have something to hang on. <laughs> Usually the clouds move on, don't they, and they pass you. But if there's a cloud hanging over your head, that cloud must be hanging on to something. And what it's hanging on to is thoughts. Dark thoughts produce dark clouds. <laughs> Amen. Thoughts have a presence about them. Did you, have you ever realized that? I'm sure you have. Thoughts have a presence to them. You know, you can sit in the corner thinking gloomy thoughts and you'll build yourself a nice dark cloud. A dark emotional cloud. And that cloud will go with you wherever your thoughts go. It'll just hang around for the ride. <laughs> dark thoughts. See, thoughts are not random. Thoughts don't just happen. Thoughts originate from somewhere. Okay? Thoughts are sent. Thoughts are sent from the light, strategically sent to our lives, strategies, plans, thoughts, ideas. But they're also sent from the realms of darkness. So you don't just have thoughts, you receive thoughts. Okay? You don't create thoughts, you receive them. And we know that there's two active realms. There's the kingdom of God and there's the kingdom of darkness. And thoughts are involved in both. And you begin to think on the thoughts that God's sending into your heart and your mind and you'll start to build a glory cloud. You'll start to build a rain cloud and you'll end up getting refreshed. Hallelujah. And one of the best ways I know to do that is just simply start praising the Lord and using the scriptures to praise Him. Praise Him for who He is, His attributes, His goodness, His kindness, His love. And you start to build a glory cloud. Hallelujah. And before long, that glory cloud bursts and the rain comes back on you. And you get refreshed. But you know, it's just as easy, if not easier, to build a a, a cloud of darkness, isn't it? (laughs) We've all been there, I'm sure. You know, you have a gloomy day and it's just think, why why, why am I so gloomy today? And and then you stop for a while and you think about, gee, what have I been thinking about? I've been thinking about this and this lack and this problem and this situation. And man... And you didn't even realize it was just kind of happening almost by default. And you built yourself a dark cloud. (laughs) And then accusation and condemnation revels in that atmosphere and environment. It comes out of that cloud to condemn you instead of a glory cloud that refreshes you. You see that? But the moment you think about Jesus, (laughs) the moment you look into his eyes, the moment you recall him in the scriptures, the light turns on. Hallelujah. And things just change in an instant sometimes. Sometimes it might take a few moments, but sometimes it can just change instantly. Hallelujah. When the light goes on. Now, Jesus had something else to say in John chapter 12. Uh, Halfway through the chapter from verse 27, he's predicting his death on the cross. But he comes down to verse um, 35. Jesus said to him, a little while longer, the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light that you may become sons of light. These things Jesus spoke and departed and was hidden from them. What's he saying? He's saying, well, I've come into the world as the light of the world, but I'm about to go to the cross and you've only got me for a little while longer. You know, the light's going to go out quite soon, as soon as I'm on that cross. And to prove it, when he did go on the cross, do you remember what happened from 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock? Pitch black. When our sin was placed on Jesus' spirit, pitch black. The sun was still up there, but it wasn't shining. You see, it was the reverse of what happened in Genesis chapter 1. 
See, he was the light of the world. That light was put out, so to speak, when our sin was put on his spirit and there was gross darkness, even though the sun was still up there. See, there's a greater light than the physical light of the sun and the moon. And the light bulb shining is a greater light. Hallelujah. Remember, we talked in Revelation that there's no need for a sun there because the Lamb shall be the light. He is our light. He is our glory. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now let's go to um, Matthew chapter 5. Is the light shining for you tonight? Matthew chapter 5. And uh, you'll be familiar with this passage talking about the salt and the light. Well, we'll read the salt as well. <laughs> Matthew 5, verse 13. You are the salt of the earth, talking to the believer. But if the salt lost its flavor, loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. And uh, just as a side note, back then when this was written, salt was a very valuable commodity. You might have heard an expression about someone being worth their salt. The reason salt was um, connected with worth is because salt used to be a very, very valuable commodity. It's quite common today, but back then it wasn't. And if you were worth your salt, that meant you were worth something. And so Jesus speaking from a place of salt being valuable. He said, you're very valuable. You're the salt of the earth. But notice this in 14. You are the light of the world. Now this is Jesus now speaking to the believer. And another place, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. But now he says, you, 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 you are the light of the world. And, uh, and then he goes on to say how powerful this light is. He said, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. So when he's thinking about you, the image Jesus has is a big city up on a hill, <laughs> which gives light. You ever seen um, being uh, in an airplane or just been for a drive maybe over the Bombay Hills and you come into the city and you see that sort of hue of the city just sort of radiating? That's what Jesus sees when he sees you. He sees you as a big light. He didn't say you're, you're a candle up on the mantelpiece. No, he, he said you're a city on a hill. Hallelujah. <laughs> what else does he say? Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand and it gives light to all who are in the house. Okay, now, if you look around, we've got over a dozen light bulbs on in this one room. But he said in this context, one light will light up the whole house. You're that light. You're that light. Mm -hmm. Wherever you go, whatever house, whatever building, whatever uh, clinic you're in, you're the one light that lights up that whole place. You, there's enough light in you for every person in that building, no matter how big the building. Hallelujah. You're like a city. Glory to God. You're like a mobile power station wherever you go. So that's how Jesus sees you. And we've got to understand that wherever we go, we are light. We are light because the light of Jesus is inside of us. We know it's not our own light. We didn't, it's not something we produce. It's something we receive when we receive the righteous nature of God. Okay? But it's a powerful, powerful light. Whether you say anything or not, if you're in that place, you're the light. <laughs> it says, let your light shine. Let your light shine. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Hallelujah. Now, don't get confused here between the works and letting your light shine. Okay, You let your light shine before you do the work. Just like God did. He said, light be. And then he went to work creating. Okay, The works won't bring the light, but the lights will bring the works. There's a difference. See, there are works that we do that draw attention to ourselves, but there are works that we do in the light that bring attention to the Father. Because he said, let your light so shine that they see your good works and glorify me. <laughs> see, there's something about working for the Father in the light of his plan and his purpose that brings glory to him. There's a difference between somebody on the job waiting till the boss come round, comes around the corner and then they start putting their best foot forward. And to someone who makes it their business 24-7 to do their work as unto the Lord. You see, that person will bring glory to God. The other person will draw attention to themselves, maybe from the boss. Okay, So let your light so shine. How do you let your light shine? Just by being who you are? <laughs> Just by walking into the room, realizing that by the grace of God, I am the righteousness of God. I am the light of the world. 
There is goodness, there's righteousness, there's truth dwelling on the inside of me. Hallelujah. And wherever I go, I let my light shine. Hallelujah. Now, if I try to do that, it's probably not going to work. But if I let it happen, it will. Hallelujah. I was just, today, I was, went for a walk, because I often do on a Saturday. I go somewhere to find a coast. And, uh, and I was obviously meditating on this. In fact, I have my smartphone. And every now and then I had to stop and just write things down because the Lord was giving me stuff through tongues and interpretation. And I was just amazed how many people said hi to me and I didn't even look at them. <laughs> it's because of the light. And I was aware of that, not trying to do anything. I was just aware that I was in this realm of letting my light shine. And it's like people are attracted to the light. You notice children were attracted to Jesus. See, people are attracted to the light. Hallelujah. And so let your light shine. Glory to God. Now, what did I say? Ephesians. And I guess just back onto that last point about going for a walk. I'm usually the one that would go out of my way to, to engage somebody and say hi to them. But today I just felt so relaxed in the light. I wasn't doing that. And people were just saying hello. Every person that went past me said hello. So I said hello back. <laughs> Ephesians 5. This is a great chapter, isn't it? Um, we'll start from the top. Ephesians 5. It's good to read the scriptures. Verse 1. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children. Okay, that's, that's a pretty amazing scripture right there, isn't it? Be imitators of God. Well, God would never tell us to do something we couldn't do. And so, like a father and a child, this is like a father saying to a son, Son, I want you to imitate me. And God is speaking to you, Anthony, to me, saying... Son, I want you to imitate me. Hallelujah. God is light, but he said we are light too. And walk in love as Christ has loved us. That's how, it's the only way we can walk in love, isn't it? Because we've received his love. Walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God, a sweet smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you, as is fitting for saints. And this is coming back to this thought of being an overcomer here, okay? And uh, that was the big theme I got out of this Revelation series, was just that, that desire to be an overcomer. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving a thanks. Hallelujah. That's a good way to build a glory cloud, isn't it? Just give thanks. <laughs> for this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, or covetous man who's an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not be partakers with them. All right. And obviously we, we don't want to do those things as people that know our Father and know the nature of God and have the nature of God on the inside of us. We don't want to do those things. And Paul said these things shouldn't, shouldn't be named among you because they're darkness. Okay, And he said, let no one deceive you with empty words. So don't let anyone tell you that it's okay to practice those things because it's not. <laughs> I believe in the grace of God and I believe that any mistake we ever make, God is way, way bigger. He always will be and he'll always love us and nothing will separate us. But don't let anyone tell you that you can practice a lifestyle of sin and walk in the light because you can't. And that's why it says there, let no one deceive you. Let no one say, well, it doesn't matter how you live because God loves you anyway. And you're covered and all that sort of thing. There may be some truth in that, but you'll end up walking in darkness. You'll end up walking in deception and you won't be able to let your light shine. He says, don't be partakers with them. Why? Verse 8, for once you were, or for you were once darkness. Notice it didn't say you were once in the darkness. It said you were once darkness. Okay. It's hard to imagine being a dark bulb, isn't it? Easy to imagine being a light bulb, but... The truth is, once we were a dark bulb, <laughs> we were darkness. What, not we were in darkness, once we were darkness. We, when we went into a room, we brought darkness with us before we were saved. Now we're light, we bring light with us. Hallelujah. Okay? You once were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light for the fruit. Your Bible says for the fruit of the Spirit, but the NU Greek version says for the fruit of the light is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Okay, so light has fruit. The fruit of the light, the light that was released when God said, light be, what did he release? He released goodness, 
He released his righteousness and he released truth. And that's the light that is in us. The righteousness of God, the truth of God, the goodness of God is in our spirit man. And whenever we walk into a room, whenever we walk into a dark place, the light comes on and goodness is available. To, it's a goodness that leads people to repentance. It's God's goodness that leads people to Jesus. It's the righteousness of God, that gift of righteousness that shines. Hallelujah. And the truth. Glory to God. Grace and truth shining forth. Once you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. In other words, know who you are. Walk as, you're a, walk as a lighthouse. Hallelujah. Walk as a beacon. Glory to God. For the fruit of the light is in all goodness, righteousness and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Okay, Because the light overcomes the darkness. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, that's pretty much what the Lord gave me to share tonight. Maybe we didn't go that long, but that was the message that he wanted me to share tonight about being an overcomer. Hello. You are an overcomer. Praise God. Why? Because you are light. And the darkness cannot overcome you. And I think one of the greatest lies of the enemy is to try and convince us that somehow God doesn't love us anymore in certain situations. Okay, To try and convince us that somehow sometimes we're not worthy of God's love. And try to devalue us in some ways. But you know, that's the beginning of deception. And the only way that he can really get us out of walking in the light is to buy into his lies. Okay, That's the only weapon he has is those dark lies. And like I said, he tries to send those to our mind and tries to build that dark cloud of condemnation that follows us around wherever we go. And then we can no longer be a witness for the Lord. We can no longer be light. Okay, why? Because of this dark cloud that's hanging around us. And then we'll get back into works and condemnation and that whole deal. Okay, but no, you are light. Praise God. That will never change. <laughs> as long as you're born again, you are light. In the Lord, wherever you go, the light is turned on by the grace of God. Hallelujah. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Praise God. There was one more thing the Lord wanted me to share. And that was that your purpose for your life was not a reaction to darkness. Okay. Like, you follow what I'm saying? It wasn't that something bad happened and then God said, okay, I need so-and-so now to come to the rescue. It wasn't like that. Before there was any darkness, God created your purpose in the light. Okay, It's important to understand that. You were not created out of a dark situation. No, before darkness was, God planned your life and planned your purpose in the light. Okay, He said, light be and light was. Glory to God. <laughs> See, if, we, if, if our purpose and plan and whatever we did was a reaction to darkness, that means we're being led by the darkness. You follow that? But we're not. God has never reacted to darkness, and He never will, and nor do we. No, that's we don't respond to darkness and make a plan of action. No, we always walk in the light. So that's sometimes we get into pro, into a, a, a bad situations because something bad happens and we react to it in the flesh, and we try and work a solution to it in the flesh. But no, we need to come back to the light first and say, God, what's the wisdom from above? God, what do you want me to do in this situation? Yeah, I, if it was left to me, I'd do this, Lord. But Father, I want to come into the light and see what your word says. And I want, to, I want to be moved by the light and not by the dark that I see. Because there's a greater light shining even when the darkness is in my face. You see that? Hallelujah. And see, like I said, God causes, the scripture says, God causes light to shine out of darkness. And you could be in a, a tough spot. You could be in a situation where it seems dark and you can't find your way out. But you know what? You set your eyes on Jesus and that light begins to shine right out from the inside your heart. And like Lazarus, you find yourself supernaturally transported out of your cave. And you don't even know how it happened. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's the power of the light. <laughs> God commanded a light to shine out of darkness has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And that's where the light is as we look into his face. That's where favor is as we look into the face of Jesus. That's where grace is, full of grace and truth. Praise God. There we go. Walk in the light. <laughs> You're an overcomer. Hallelujah.